Sorry about that, everybody. Hey, this is Sheets. It is January 18th, and we are going to be looking at the MX uh, PGA event from a DFS perspective. And uh, for those of you that watch my videos on other sports, you're going to catch on to a recurring theme here. So when I'm going to do these kind of on my own, I'm not going to go through golfer by golfer or tier by tier or anything like that. What I'm committed to do with this DFS project is to kind of teach you guys how to play uh, using the tools that are available on TrueDFS. Rather than just go through and say, you know, what, what the plays are, I I'm really trying my best to give you a repeatable process that you can go to time and time again uh, using the tools available to you such that you don't really have to keep coming back to these preview videos. You know, I, listen, I don't mind doing them. It doesn't take me that long and helps me kind of get an idea of what to do. But you guys really, after watching these a few times, um, you should be able to replicate this process on your own. Um, listen, you still need to access the tools and the projections and the lineup builders that we the, give you on TrueDFS.com, um, for, especially for premium members, but you shouldn't have to just keep coming back here every time to, to, to watch these videos. So I'm going to continue to do this. And in a weird way, I almost want the number of, of views to go down. So I essentially want them to go up, meaning the more people watch, the better. But then eventually, less people should have to watch them because they're going to learn how to do this on their own. And in a weird way, if I get that, I, I think I've done my job here. Um, so what we're going to do is, well, this is what we're not going to do. Uh, for, for those of you who watch this, but we're not going to go through golfer by golfer and go through all their metrics and things like that, okay? Because all of that kind of stuff is is already factored in to the very uh, the very strong projections that we have available on TrueDFS. Now, again, if, if you want to get be, be really go to deep dive in deep diving into that type of data, that's that's cool. But that's not you know my typical audience. You know, you guys just I'd like to show you guys how to use other people's data and other people's work, and then figure out how to build lineups with that. Um, so. Again, what we've created, I think, or what I've created on TrueDFS is a really good combination of the industry aggregate projection models um, with kind of a neat little twist in that we backtest all these things for accuracy. So one model is doing well with a certain type of play that gets bumped a little bit or, or dinged a little bit. And I really feel as though these projections, at least from a median perspective, are just about the best there are. I mean, honestly, it's, well, it, and that certainly makes sense, you know, when the, the the more opinions combined, that's the way the law of large numbers works, but the more likely they are to be accurate. Um, so again, we're not talking about, you know, uh, range of outcomes with this particular analysis. We're just looking at like who the good plays are, and then we'll figure out how to build good lineups with those good plays. And those are somewhat different. So, okay. So let's not even go through golfer by golfer. Let's just pull up the main sheet, which is the true DFS uh, uh, sheet. And we're going to rank these guys one of two ways. We're going to rank them either by points per dollar or by sheets value score. Okay. Now you're going to get sort of different looks, you know, because these things measure two different things. So, so point per dollar basically just measures, not even basically just measures your, the ratio of, of, of fantasy points to salary. So if you divide 101.21 by 10, eight, um, whatever, you get 9.37. And that is the purest measure excuse me, and that is the purest measure of value that there is. Sorry, so you, so you uh, divide 72 by 77, seven, you get 10.29, whatever. Um, so that is the purest measure of value there is, okay? Um, and usually the guys, the, or the guys, whatever, the plays that rate the best are usually cheap, okay? And, and that's fine. Um, and the other way to rank these guys is by what I call Sheets Value Score. So Sheets Value Score is basically combines the benefit of just being able to put a lot of points up with also a measure of, of point per dollar value. And I feel as though it's probably the best measure in most sports of, of what whether someone's a good player or not. Because it's for me, like it's not just enough to say, okay, you're cheap. I mean, you're really, really cheap. So your, your, your ratio is going to be good because you do need like a good amount of fantasy points, you know? So I'd rather have the more expensive guy with a little less of a ratio than the cheaper guy with, with a little bit better ratio. Um, so a sheets value score kind of uh, accommodates that. 
um, in, in what I think is kind of a cool way. And this ownership, uh, projected ownership uh, number is usually pretty good. If anything, I think that the um, that the, the, the highest owned guys might get end up higher owned a little bit. That's just the way it goes. Um, I already adjust for that a little bit. Maybe in the future, I'll adjust for that a little bit more. Nonetheless, uh, that's what ownership is. And again, when you're building your GPP lineups, you want to play the lowest owned guys possible. Um, that's obviously oversimplifying, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to more of that. So let's first, let's talk about this, this event a little bit. Now, everything I'm about to say is already probably factored into the projections somewhat, but just so you guys know, it's kind of a weird hybrid of no cut and, and cut event. The no cut event, you're going to have all your golfers playing all four rounds. The normal standard cut event, you have a two rounds and then you have a cut of, you know, what's the top 70 in ties or something like that, where mostly half the field's gone. But this, this, this one's a weird one because you have a cut, but they wait till after the third round to do it. And the reason for that is interesting. It's because there are three different courses that they use. Um, and what they do is they give each golfer a shot on each course. And then after those three rounds, that's when they make the cut. Um, and then they all play on the same course, you know, in, in, in the, on the last day. Um, so typically in no cut events, those are usually very conducive to stars and scrubs. Like you get these, these awesome golfers that even if they have a bad day or two, they can still kind of come back and, and score well. Uh, where the cut events usually kind of really punish those, you know, they, they punish the, the high priced guys that are not going to have a good day because if they get cut, you know, if they miss the cut, they're just dead. Okay. Um, the, the, the three day cut, I guess you consider that a hybrid of the two that you probably want to air more towards the side of the, of the, of the, you know, the big spend ups, but not all the way up. So I guess that makes perfect sense. So, uh, I'm not going to get into what the course differences are, uh, except to say that don't be alarmed if your golfers are not doing well after the day, first day, if they're playing on the hard course. And don't get too excited after the first day. If they have a good score, they play it on the easy course. Um, of course, getting excited and whatever is not particularly constructive anyway, but hey, we like rooting. I suggest you really just wait till the third day, sweat the last Sweat the last uh, last hour of cut, uh, and and then you know, root for round four. But now we're all going to sweat every day. We 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 know that. Um, one little uh, referral, by the way, you should probably subscribe to CutSweats.com. I I subscribe, and it's kind of a fun site. It actually shows you how your lineups are doing relative to the projected cut, which is kind of fun. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm sure Nelson would appreciate that. Uh, I don't have any relationship with them at all, but I, I have to like this. All right. So two ways to analyze this. And it's the same as I do for most sports. First thing we're going to do is we are going to sort by, uh, not by fantasy points, by point per dollar. And what we're looking for in point per dollar is the high rated high salary guys right now what does that mean well as i mentioned before point per dollar rankings usually favor the cheap guys so if you can find an expensive guy who also rates well point per dollar that's naturally going to be a really strong strong play and it seems like you know super instinctive but people don't look at it that way all the time so this is the way i like to visualize this and then we're going to build a hand-built lineup with these observations, then we're going to use Saberson to build, you know, and then knee lineups. So the first guy that actually pops out for me is Cam Young, right? So he is the, by far, the highest priced golfer that is in this good point per dollar range, okay? So he looks to be the, 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 the guy that you really want to start your lineups with. Um, and then the next guys, uh, Jason Day, 7,900. The other most expensive guy that's high rated point per dollar. And then the next two I look at are Will Gordon and Dean Burmester. Okay. So, so we could actually start building like that. All right. So, for example, let's put in, uh, who do we say? Uh, Cameron Young. 
And then we will do uh, Jason Day. Then we can do uh, Burmester. Who else did I say? Will Gordon. Is there another guy? Uh, Gordon, Burmester, and Young and Day. All right, so those so those four are like a really, really good start to your lineups, I think, if you just do this first screen. And the second screen is kind of the inverse. Uh, you might end up with similar guys, but sometimes you don't. What we want to do now is sort by Sheets value score. And what we're looking for here are the cheapest guys that show up in the Sheets value score rankings. Because as I mentioned, Sheets value score tends to uh, favor the high price guys. So we can find cheap guys in this range of, you know, in this, in this uh, ranking list uh, near the top, then I think it's, we're in good shape. So we do see Cameron Young again, showing up right there. Makes sense. Great play. The next guy that kind of shows up that we didn't see yet was Tom Hoagie at 8,400. Um, and then you have Will Zalatoris who looks good. Tom Kim looks good. There's that Will Gordon play again. And then Taylor Montgomery. Okay, so you want to talk about a core? Like these types of plays are your core. Like guys that show up in both of these metrics. All right. Um, this is, again, this is this is the way I do. This is using TrueDFS, you know, my own projections, my own, you know, way of doing things. So I'm sure there are other ways, but this is this works for me really, really nicely. So we want to add a hoagie to the list and Zalatoris to the list. Now, it would be fun if, as a matter of fact, this has actually happened. We go, oh, like, so I'm not saying you have to do this, but like, for example, you could build a lineup literally just like this. Okay. Now we, we didn't run an algorithm. We didn't do anything. We certainly didn't, you know, use an optimizer. And you know what else? We didn't, we didn't check ownership either. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to build a lineup like, like this, okay, you can certainly do this. Now, again, this is, these are not the most updated projections. We'll, we'll, we'll update them again right up until lock. But, but you want to talk about a process, right? That is definitely a process to, to build lineups is literally just to look at the sheets, rate them the way I just did, okay? And, um, and, and see what you can fit. Now, it doesn't always fit in that nicely, but, uh, and, and as you'll notice, by the way, Cam Young, really popular, Zalator, like all these guys are pretty popular. So you're not fooling anybody with this, but it, it's a way to build a good line. Um, okay. The other thing you can do is use Saber Sim, and that's what we're going to do here. As a matter of fact, you want to get greedy. Well, it didn't work last time, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try to use the true DFS lineup. This is buggy, but maybe it's in a good mood. So if you're not a Saber Sim subscriber, if you just want to build some lineups, you'll go here and I would just load the projections from Sheets instead of putting your own in. Oh, well, you know what? First thing it did, it, it, it loaded. That's good news. Um, you could you could lock or exclude a guy if you wanted, right, by doing this. And then I had it, almost had it. Saw an L-E. Pretty sure it works. Got to try that. But if you want to build, say, one lineup, no time, just boom. And it'll build a lineup for you. Okay. It'll say projected ownership. It'll say with projected projected points or whatever it is. Right? Let's say, oof, like greedy. Let's hit reset. Let's say you want to build 20 lineups using just the true DFS optimizer. Now, again, this is definitely not as conducive to upside and winning as it is to use Sabersim, but let's see if we can build 20. Ready? Ready? Let's go. I was very testy earlier. Still time for your wagers. It's great, great to start today. It's great. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, the 20 lineups are a little bit fishy. Oh, you tried. We tried. I, um. But what we can do is we can go to Saber Sim while this guy's thinking. 
and see what kind of lineups we get using our projections with Sabreson. Now, again, we're using the same information as we did before, you know, when we built by hand. We're uploading those exact projections into the Sabersim uh, optimizer. I call it an optimizer, but I kind of think of it more of as a smart randomizer. Um, and then let's have it build 150 lineups at the 150 max entry limit. In other words, you're getting like a lot of sim diversity, which means variance out of these lineup builds, okay, which is what you want. So if we built 150 lineups, I wonder if, I mean, I still think we probably get Cameron Young as our top owned guy, but I think that it gives you a lot of other juice. Um, juice meaning, you know, lower owned guys that maybe don't rate as well, but have a certain amount of upside and maybe are not as highly owned. Let's just see what I would get. Yeah, I mean, Cameron Young does look to be the most popular guy. And the other thing you do see, by the way, is a lot of guys near the top, you know, as so as I mentioned before, that stars and scrubs type build is is pretty uh is pretty popular. Um, it makes a lot of sense when you have three rounds to work with for your no cut, you know, stud golfers. Um, and then I would just probably, you know, make a couple of, you know, uh, stupid little tweaks like, boy, I don't like David Lipsky. Boom. X him out. Maybe. Or Xander Shoffley has a bad back. Boom. X him out. I think the less you do of that, the better. But listen, you're you're I'm not gonna tell you not to do that. You have opinions, go ahead, use them. You don't want the last thing you want is to not cast for two hundred thousand because of because you didn't like put your opinion in for like one golf or something like that. Uh, as part of this is fun. Part of this is not just grinding the spreadsheets and you know, part of it is just kind of coming up on with your own plays. Now I know that's not what a lot of people want to hear. Maybe that's not the most EV thing to do, but I mean, this is, listen, we're not doing this for to be billionaires. This is fun. And if I'm coming in with a 1.26 EV as opposed to 1.22, who cares? I mean, I, I want, you know what I mean? I want to have some fun doing this. Um, anyway, uh, that's for another discussion. Uh, and that should do it. Good luck, everybody. And, and look, watch for the updated projections. They should probably come in tomorrow morning before we start, which is 1130 a.m. And uh, that'll do it. Good luck.